24 years. It's been 24 years since we've seen anything of Battle Beasts. Yeah, we had Mini Mates tease with their little Battle Beast promotion stuff from San Diego Comic Con and C2E2, but this is the real deal. And Takara, for the 25th anniversary since its debut in 1987, has created Beast Saga. This is the true revival of the Battle Beast toy line, and I'm going to be reviewing the whole first wave. So let's do this. Proto Retro. So like I said, it's been 24 years since we've seen anything new from Battle Beasts. Um, I've been a huge fan of this line since I was a little kid playing in a sandbox with one of my best friends from grade school with Battle Beasts. And I've always loved this line. I love the fact that it has a, a deep connection to the Transformers mythos. I love that. Uh, it's just such a simple concept, but yet it's so fun. When I heard that Minimates got the license, I was so excited. And I remember when San Diego Comic-Con had these and C2E2 and the New York Comic-Con, I went nuts and bought these off of eBay because I had so much hope that they were going to do something great with the Battle Beasts license. But they disappointed me heavily, and there was just delay after delay after delay. And then out of nowhere, right on the brink of the 25th anniversary of the creation of Battle Beasts from Japan, Takara gave us Beast Saga, which is the true modern interpretation of Battle Beasts. And this is what we have today, is the entire first wave. I went nuts and I bought it all. So I'm going to be reviewing it all for you guys in a nice manner. I'm going to show you guys all the cool stuff about it. And just to give you this deep, deep interpretation of everything and all the homages and all the throwbacks, this line has the heart. This is the one that is truly the predecessor to the original. So I'm going to show you everything. So let's open these up and let's show it all. So we're going to start with BS01. BS01 is the starter pack from the Kingdom of Land Glory. It's a three pack that comes with three beasts from the Kingdom of Land. What I just want to state is that this time around, uh, the concept isn't fire, water, and wood. Instead, it's land, sea, and air. And there's also a different play concept to it too, but we're going to get into that. Um, I just want to point out one thing that's awesome with the box is that they threw a, an awesome homage to the past. See this image here where it has all the, the modern beasts all gathered together? Here's a pirate lion from Japan from 1987. And the same idea in the back. They did that old like gathering of the beasts together in the wilderness with the pirate lion in the front. In this case, we have uh, Ryoga, who's the, the new lion leader, if you will. So that is really cool that they made that effort. Another cool thing too, which I'm gonna get to when I show you the, the cards and stuff that they come with, there's a lot of cool little throwbacks. So let's crack this right, one. So open. first we have <clears throat> Ryoga, who's the leader of uh, the team. We have uh, Big Sero, and then we have Gdam, which is an adorable hamster. Now each figure comes with their own character dice, which has the logo of the character themselves, which is usually based on the animal that they are. And then they have uh, packed with it uh, fighting dice. Now I'm going to get to later on how uh, this all plays together with the game, but for right now we're going to focus on just the figures. Now, um, Ryoga is clearly a throwback to, of course, White Lyo. Here, we'll put them next to each other, just to give you a si an idea of scale. They're a little larger than the original Battle Beasts, and they're a lot more articulated. Uh, they articulated the arms and the legs. And what's cool too is all the pieces actually could pop off with a little bit of effort, including the head, and you could swap them with the other ones to make customs, which is kind of a cool concept. Everything comes with uh, a weapon and a shield. Uh, that weapon and a shield could range between a sword and a shield, or a gun and a shield, or some kind of melee weapon. So, he's kind of a throwback to, to Pirate Leo or White Leo, whichever one you want to call him, the Japanese name or the American name. But he's also kind of a throwback to uh, the Laser Beast Brown Lion, which I think he almost encompasses a lot more. But considering that he has a sword, and Brown Lion didn't, it's kind of a mix between the two, which is also similar to uh, Big Saro so here. Big Saro is the same thing. He clearly, judging by his profile and the way he looks, he's uh, Fighthorn, the Laser Beast uh, character. But because of his weapon, 
which is a drill, it's also a throwback to the other reindeer-esque or uh, character, uh, Deer Hunter, who had a drill weapon too. So it's kind of also a fusion of those two characters. So another interesting throwback. And then you have G-Dem, who is just absolutely adorable. Uh, he's obviously a, a new animal. They haven't ever done a, a hamster in uh, the Battle Beast line in the past, so that's really cool that that exists. Now I'm just going to show you just the gimmick. Here, I'll use G-Dems. You just, you get, you the character, when you load it in, it has the dice like that, and it sticks out horribly in the back, and it launches very hard. But you could plug it. You could plug it in all the way. It doesn't protrude, and it looks very nice. I get a feeling in the future we're going to be seeing uh, repro labels for these uh, little chest boxes that are going to be throwbacks to the original Battle Beast designs. I just know it. So uh, repro labels get on that. So that's more or less Land Glory, uh, Kingdom of Land Glory starter pack in a nutshell. BSO one. Let's move to number two. Now here is BSO two. This is the Kingdom of the Sea Death Heart. This one I was really, really, really looking forward to. Um, as a kid, my favorite Battle Beast was Sawtooth Shark. And I loved his playset, uh, which was also like a gigantic shark. And now he's back. And this is crazy homage. They kept his trident. They kept his shark look details. The little, you know, details on the shoulders. Absolutely amazing. All the weapons are there. They're removable and swappable this is this is like my you know classics version if you will of my childhood battle beast favorite so really cool to see uh, a modern version of Satu shark um, his name actually is Killa shark and that's that interpretation this one here is called Koolens which is a Japanese word for god knows what uh, maybe it's a play on an English word, but he clearly is a homage to uh, Killer Carp. That's the clearly what they were going for. You can even see it in the details and everything. Uh, it's a throwback to that character. And Killer Carp, actually, in um, in the animation with Headmasters and Transformers, he was kind of the guy who worked directly with the Decepticons. He was kind of the main villain to uh, to like White Lyo or Pirate Lyo. So these were like the Autobot, Decepticon, Optimus, Megatron equivalencies, Rodimus, Galvatron, whatever you want to. So it's nice to uh, to see also a modern version of him, although he is the main leader of this crew in this set here. And then the last one here is Parazon, and he's a piranha. Now, interestingly enough, Battle Beast, uh, in all the figures that they've done, which is a little under 100, uh, they've never done a piranha. So this is the first time we're seeing something like that. So still pretty cool. Uh, easily my favorite of the sets of the two starters thus far. Um, and really awesome. So let's get to the next one. Now BSO3 is called the Blind Pact Warrior of Land. Uh, which kind of doesn't make any sense because they include pretty much beasts from all the different tribes. Uh, but this is the Blind Pact series. You don't know who you're getting. And it's one of eight different characters, and they're all clear repaints of uh, other available figures that aren't blind packed. But that's not to say that it's just a shallow repaint thing, and I'll explain why. Um, I only got one of these, and with just my luck, I got the clear version of Killer Shark, my favorite character as a kid. So, that's pretty awesome. But uh, what is different, though, and here I'll show you, is, aside from the card being different, because here's the card for the clear one, and here's the card for the the uh, the actual toy itself. Here, I'll bring them in. The actual one. Here's the dice. He, he comes with two dice and two weapons. And here's the cool thing. You actually get unique weapons uh, for the blind packed ones. And, you know, unique uh, spear there and a shield. So pretty cool that they, they made the effort to not just make it a straight up repaint. And the card art is different. Unfortunately, the information is the same on the back. It's only his name is different. It's a powered up version. See, Killer Shark, Killer Shark, powered up. So, same thing otherwise. But it's still nice that they made the effort to give new weapons. Um, the dice are still the same, but still pretty cool. It's a nice, uh, you know, cheaper way because the blind pack stuff is a lot cheaper than the straight up figures. 
and they do look really nice though. And uh, I mean, it doesn't do it justice here, but when you put them up to the light, it looks really nice, these things. So that's BSO-3. BSO-4 is more just uh, a kind of a gateway toy for a lot of kids. Uh, if they don't want to pay the large amount for the three pack to get the leader character, you can get uh, Ryoga straight up like this, single pack, not different at all from the original. Uh, the only thing actually that I could note is the uh, the shield and sword again are different, but everything else otherwise is exactly the same. So Ryoga BSO4, just the single pack, but exactly like the other one otherwise, except for two little weapons, which you can see right there if you flip it over. So that's it for that one. BSO5, Eredoramu. Now Eredoramu is a elephant, a heavily armed elephant. Uh, I feel that he's kind of the throwback to Sledgehammer Elephant uh, from Battle Beasts, uh, although sadly he doesn't have a sledgehammer. Instead he has like wicked ass guns and everything. Uh, but still, like, this guy is huge, uh, even by the standard sizes of these beasts, and really detailed and really cool looking. So that's Eridoramu. BSO6, Long Tsurafu. Obviously a play on Long Giraffe. Um, he's the throwback to a uh, rubberneck giraffe from Battle Beasts, being the only two giraffes that there was. And the only thing I really want to say about him is he has a sword that seriously should go with uh, uh, Ryoga, because that is totally uh, the sword that uh, White Lyo used to use. So really nice looking weapons he comes with. And this guy's also pretty huge, this one. So this is Long Tsurafu, BS06. BSO7, Buri Sodo. Now, Buri Sodo is a Marlin, and clearly the Marlin throwback was, um, although horribly named, uh, the Laser Beast Spark Shark. But uh, Spark Shark was clearly a, a Marlin in design, so this is the throwback to him. Uh, pretty awesome. Spark Shark is water. That's how Laser Beasts worked. You had to look through them. So, that's that. BSO7, Burisodo. BSO8, Dorufan. Now, Dorufan is one of the new faces to the line. Uh, he's this cute dolphin. Uh, but don't let his face fool you. Because he might be a cute dolphin, but he's actually part of the bad guys. And the card art kind of really shows that. Because he's all cute here, but here it looks like he wants to mess some shit up. So, uh... This guy is really the oddball of the line, along with uh, G-Dam, the, the hamster, but still, I, I couldn't live without it. They are so awesome looking. <laughs> so this is a BS-08 Dorufan. BS-09, yet another new face, uh, Bamed. Now, Bamed uh, is kind of an oddity, because uh, when we first saw the early solicitations of him, it was grainy images, and we thought that he was actually uh, a penguin which we thought was going to be a homage to uh, uh, Pugnacious Penguin from the Battle Beast line. But on closer inspection, when we got the figure, we noticed that he's actually kind of like a, a sparrow kind of bird. And these, uh, these feathers on the side is a common thing among the tribe of the Kingdom of the Sky, which is going to get a starter pack in the next wave. So he's like the, the real first uh, foray into those this tribe of them. So he's pretty cool, though, and we're going to be seeing a lot more of the bird ones. So uh, this is uh, BS09, Bamed. And lastly, BS010, Moriku. Now, Moriku is the bat, and this guy is crazy detailed. Um, nice purple, deranged-looking face. Awesome-looking character. Kind of looks like he would be like one of the main villains, actually. Uh, he's kind of the throwback... Uh, to uh, Blitzkrieg Bat from Battle Beasts. There was another bat too, but I find that uh, Blitzkrieg looks a lot more like uh, uh, Moriku, so that's who I think he throws back to. So that's BSO10 Moriku. Now my final word on all of this is I want to just point out the wise move that Takaratami did by the way this line evolved into the dice aspect that it is. Um, especially how toy lines are in Japan, and the most successful ones are usually game-based, uh, that's the direction that they went with Beast Saga. And they decided to do a, 
a game where you have the figures and it's a random roll of the dice which determine damage and who does the damage first. The cards actually play a little bit of an aspect too, but it's more just to talk about the power ratings. The cards also, what they are, is just statistics for the characters. Usually it's the name of the character, uh, their function, uh, their power level, uh, a little bit about their profile, and then a comment of a other battle beast about them. Sometimes their teammate, sometimes a rival, which is a nice touch, and it always has a picture of the rival or the teammate. Uh, this is actually a throwback to, to the original Battle Beast, the Hexagon tech spec, which was something that they used to use in Battle Beast. And it's very common with a lot of other Japanese toy lines, but it's nice that they make that effort too with the original Battle Beast. So they have the instructions and they explain in great detail actually how to play the game. And I'm thinking maybe in the future I'll do a video explaining how to play it uh, for all us English speakers. So it's pretty cool though. A lot of it's you know, very photo detail of how to play it, so it's not difficult if you pick up a starter pack, it comes in with that. Also, in the starter pack comes the play field. Uh, you get one half of it. As they show in the picture here, uh, there's two playing fields. You each get a half, you and your friend, and you play together. And then you choose your three main characters, and obviously you have your cards here that would uh, represent those characters. So, nice little extra that's included with the uh, starter pack, BS1 and BS2, and the future uh, starter pack BS, which is the uh, Kingdom of the Sky. So, that's all I really wanted to say. Uh, I'm super stoked that Battle Beast is back. Beast Saga is going to be my foray. I'm going to be picking up more of these. This is such a great line. The details are amazing on these. I heavily, heavily suggest if you were ever a Battle Beast fan to check these out because you're going to be coming screaming back after you pick up one of these, especially if it's one that was based off of a childhood character that you really liked. So that's all i got to really say about that. So this is Protomat of Proto Retro, and this has been a video review of Beast Saga Wave 1 release as of September 2012. Uh, 2013 J January is going to have Wave 2. Hopefully I'll have all of that by then, and I'll be glad to review all of that for you guys because this stuff is amazing. So until then, guys, roll out.